Hey everybody, welcome back to your seventh JavaScript tutorial. Thank you for sticking with it so far. I know it's still kind of early in the series, although I want to talk about something that's kind of advanced. So I'm going to simplify it a little bit, not get real technical, hopefully make you understand, but I mean, you can always go more in depth if you want, but I'd like to get this across early in the series so you really understand how JavaScript works with literals and objects. So we're going to be looking behind the scenes of JavaScript. Come on, work. There we go. All right, in JavaScript, everything is treated as an object. So when we started, we had uh, properties and methods. I explained that in video number one. So here we declare a variable, and we initialize it with the value Caleb the Video Maker 2, the string. And yes, this is a subliminal message to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. <laughs> subscribe.length will return a value. It'll re it'll tell you how many characters is in the string. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That is a really long name. But anyways, behind the scenes, the value of the variable subscribe is not an object. It's a literal. We talked about this in data types a little bit, but now we're going to be going in more depth. So if you remember, from the data type video, we have two types of values, literals, and then anything else is an object. So we have strings, numbers, boolean, null, and undefined. If the two groups are literals and objects, it would make sense to say that literals are in fact different than objects. They're something else. They are not the same as objects. And that is right, they are in fact not objects, as I just said. Alright, so, objects have properties and methods. Literals do not. So, as you can see, you may be asking, explain this then. See, we're declaring a variable, x, and we're assigning it the value, yo my broha, whatever that means. <laughs> and then, we use a property, x.length it's going to return a value 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, well, this length, that's a property. And as I said earlier, this is a literal. This value here is a literal. So, how is it that this literal value has a property that we can use, such as length? Because it's not an object. If the variable x points to a literal value rather than an object, how can we use that property? That's what we're going to be answering in this video. x.length is known as object syntax. Syn sorry, syntax. <laughs> Basically, when we use periods between the, oops, the object and the property, this is known as object syntax or dot all right, so anyways, it must be an object, right? Well, not necessarily. The value of x is a literal. It is not an object. When we use a property on x, JavaScript is actually looking at a copy of the string in object form. So that's a little confusing, so let's look at a simplified beginner version of this. <laughs> All right, so here we have x. It's a variable with a value. The value is going to be a literal. And when necessary, JavaScript is going to create an object copy of this, pretty much. When we need a property, which is something only objects have, JavaScript looks at the object version of the value. So x.length is going to look at the object copy, not the literal. It's going to look at the object version. JavaScript does this behind the scenes. So users, uh, use, the, user, oh, sorry. the user only sees it as variable x having a value. All the other stuff is done behind the scenes and you're not really going to know about it unless you work in depth with JavaScript and figure out how literals act and how objects act, which we'll be getting into that in future videos. So here we have a user, we'll name him Pablo, and he, he defined or declared a variable x. 
and he gave it a value as well. What the uh, we could say a value is a string. It doesn't really matter. And behind the scenes of JavaScript, so you can say there's like an imaginary wall right here. The user only sees variable x, but behind the scenes in normal operations, JavaScript is going to use a literal data type. But if necessary, if a method or property is called, well, then JavaScript is going to use an object version of the same data that is created from the literal. So once again, variable x has a value that is a literal, literal data type. And through normal operation, we're going to use the literal data type. But when we use a method or property, the object version of the same data is going to be used. So that's the copy that right here, JavaScript created, right here, is going to be used for methods and properties. So hopefully that's not too confusing. I'm trying to break it down simple, but I mean, in general, it's a confusing concept. Well, because of this, literals act like objects. Because of this is all all of this is done behind the scenes, we can call a method or request the value of a property on any literal value without getting errors or understanding how things work behind the scenes. But understanding how things work behind the scenes is always better to create better JavaScript code. In fact, most people don't understand that everything in JavaScript is not an object, but everything in JavaScript actually acts like an object as we just saw because we have the object copy. So why methods do not change a value? So if you remember from previous videos, we can also call methods on literal values. A method takes the value, does something with it, and returns it. These are also known as functions. Basically, it would look something here, I'll type down here. That is an example of a method. Here is our variable identifier or name of the variable. And this is going to uppercase the value of the variable. We always had to reassign the new value to the original variable or to a new variable. So here we have a variable. We, we declared it. It has an identifier subscribe. And it has a value that is of string type and it says subscribe to my channel. Now subscribe to uppercase, well this right here is the method right here. This is going to uppercase all of the characters within the string and return subscribe to my channel. So yeah, pretty big deal. It's all caps. That means I'm serious. <laughs> but the return value does nothing unless the assigned unless assigned to the original variable or a new one. So, yeah, let me change this to the proper font here. So subscribe is equal to the old value of subscribe in uppercase letters. That's basically what it says in English. So the old value was subscribe to my channel. We're going to uppercase it and then so we're going to uppercase it and then we're going to assign it back to the variable subscribe. So now variable subscribe has a value of subscribe to my channel. The reason behind this, this is because we cannot run methods on literal strings because they're not objects. This does nothing to the literal string. Because this is a method, it is required that JavaScript uses the object copy of the value. This means the method is not being done on the literal value, which is why nothing changes. So if we look back at this picture, you can see we have a variable. We call it a method to uppercase. It takes the data from the object version of the same data. So this value up here does not get affected, or nothing is even done with this literal value up here. So we have a variable x. It's a string, hey. We uppercase it, and then we alert, which is just a way to test what variables are or show things on the screen. There's all, there's other ways to do it, but that's just an example of one. This will give us hey, 
in lowercase letters, not hey, in all capital letters. So this the the method follows the path of the object version. The literal is untouched. So variable x, it's a method, so it goes to the object version of the same data. Now we reassign it. So we have variable x is equal to the string pi. It's a method, so we call to uppercase, goes to the object copy, which is pi lowercase, and it outputs pi in all capital letters. We then take this value, reassign it to the original value. So in the next, uh, whenever we use the variable in the, in the next coding sequence or whatever you want to call it, variable x is now going to have the value pi in all capital letters. And as you can see, the literal over here, nothing is done with it. It's still the value pi unless we change what variable x is equal to value-wise. So to explain that a little better, once we assign pi in all capital letters back to variable x, it is going to update the literal value, and the value is not going to be pi lowercase. It would be, I have nowhere to type this, but it would be uh, pi uppercase. So I guess I could illustrate this real quickly. New.html, and I can make a little script, and I can end the script. So what we can do is create a string, or a variable, variable x is equal to hey. So now I have a variable x, which has the value hey. Now we're going to call a method. Notice I use the same method every time, but there's other ones. But I think it's as simple to use the same one each time. All right, so when we run this in a web browser, well, it's not really going to do anything. So we can run in Chrome, and you can see no value is returned or displayed. A value is returned, but it, we never displayed it to the screen. So we could try um, alert x. And then when we save it and update our page, a JavaScript alert is going to come up that says, hey. And to uppercase is not going to affect the original variable. But we could do something like to uppercase here. So now we're alerting the uppercase version, I forgot the parentheses, of x. So when we refresh the page now, it's hey in all capital letters. Now there's something else that's useful in JavaScript. That is the type of. All right, so this is going to test what type of value a value is, what type a value is. So we, with sorry, <laughs> within these parentheses, we can put something such as type of x. We refresh the page. And of course, to see this, we could alert it. Let me just get rid of this. So now we're alerting the type of x. Let's refresh the page, and it's a string. Well, we could do this again, and we could say x is now equal to x to uppercase. Refresh it, and you can say, see, it's still a string. So if we look back at our uh, presentation here, all right, so. As I was saying, we change the variable x to the capital pi, and it goes back to the literal value. So in review, obviously this is a simplified picture version of the actual process. When you use methods or properties of literals, JavaScript defines a copy of the original value with the type object. This object copy is only going to be used when necessary. Usually, we can treat, treat literals as objects in how they act, but there are, no more, there are more underlying differences we will get into in future videos. So, some other stuff, be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much, and uh, that's all I have to say in this video. Kind of ran a little long, but that's okay. But I will see you in the next one.